Hello, everybody, and welcome to this webinar about cam uh, campus integration with Electit. My name is Stefan Skallenberg, and next to me, I have uh, our customer integration specialist, David, David McNulty. Hi, David. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Your headset is working well. <laughs> good, good. Glad. All right. So um, after this webinar is over, uh, you can always contact us at david.mcnulty at elector.com to ask anything about the uh, camp, uh, campus integrations. And you can also reach out to me if you have some questions uh, regarding Electrode at support USA at elector.com. All right, um, let's move on. So um, last week we did the introduction part, part one. Uh, today it will be the more advanced one, uh, part two. We'll have a quick recap, uh, not recap, recap, <laughs> sorry, that webinar uh, of the webinar part one, how to organize your gradebook using the assignment section in Canvas, how to change the weight of your grades with, with the assignment tool, how to change the lesson grades, grade, grades from score results to finished unfinished results, and how to create task sheets in Canvas. And after that, we will have some time for uh, Q&A. And I will uh, unmute the microphones as well in the end. If you have any questions in between, um, please uh, feel free to type them out here. Uh, we'll uh, take uh, regular, uh, yeah, regular breaks to see if there are any questions so you can Always type them here in your question box. And in the end of the webinar, I will unmute the microphones. And uh, if you click here on the red microphone and it turns green, uh, we can hear you basically. Hey, Tim, it looks like we've only got one attendee today. Do you want to do an open mic so that he can just jump in and ask sure. questions? Yep, let's do that. Let's do that. Um, yeah. We Go have more people unmute. signed up because they often download our. Uh, um, how do you say it? Our um, uh, recorded webinar. So, but that's fine. That's more than fine. Um, so, if you have any questions in between, please let us know. Or you want to know something, how you can set up your own account uh, really well. Uh, I can always stop the recording, and uh, we can just send the rest of uh, the people uh, uh, another recording. So, feel free to ask any questions in between. All right. Um, so. Again, this will be recorded, the webinar, and we'll send that to the people we are, who are attending now. All right, let's move over to our Canvas uh, environment here. So I already got a, yeah, I like to link with Canvas here in this uh, page. You see that here by Electric Academy 101. So let's go in there. I will do a quick recap from last week. So um, you can put an instructor tool here on the left side of your menu. Uh, we have a uh, we have an instructor tool uh, with Elected where you have direct access to Elected. To do that, you go here to the settings first on the bottom. Then you navigate to the navigation bar here on the top. Go to the bottom of your page, and you will have a longer list than I have prob probably. And then uh, you have to search for the Elected here. You can grab and drag that over to the top of your screen. Say save, and automatically here on the left side of your screen, you have an, uh, yeah direct access to Electric. Uh, one quick note here. Uh, so you see here, for example, with announcements, with the pages and all that, it's not visible for students. The Electric tool is also not visible to the, to the students. Um, only it doesn't show it here on the right. There's no small symbol that it's not visible, but it won't be visible to your students. All right, um, let's go to the modules part because this is the part where you want to organize your lessons and assignments. And uh, this is what your uh, students basically can view. So in the last webinar, I gave a couple of examples how you can organize it. You can do it by week. Uh, you can also organize it by uh, course structure. So you could say engine performance, electrical, all that stuff. Today, I will show you really quick how to do it by week. So I use the plus module here on the right top of the screen.
at module and you see here we have three weeks. All right, um, so the next thing what I showed uh, last week was like how to add some um, lessons or assignments in here from elected. So what we're gonna do now is create a deep link and a deep link means it's like a uh, communication link between Canvas and Electoid. And um, yeah, basically you're using Electoid and you write, uh, yeah, all kind of information to Canvas, especially the grading part. So let's do that here by clicking on the plus. You're at the, behind the week one. And you see add item to week one and you want to uh, select here the external tool. All right, and then we want to go scroll down here and look for the elected tool deep linking. And automatically the screen opens here. You can make it back, bigger if you want to here on the right bottom. And there's actually two ways uh, what we can link um, with, our, with our account system. One is like we can link a whole course and the second way is like we can just uh, link a singular uh, lessons or assignments. Um, what I also explained uh, last week was like, here in, in elective we call a lesson or an assignment, a module. So that's a little bit confusing. So I will use the module tab here in elective, the word. But I'm not gonna use the uh, yeah a singular module, the name, uh, because that will would confuse us uh, with Canvas. Um, First, I want to link uh, some singular uh, lessons or assignments. You can do that here in the modules page. Um, so if you click, for example, here on modules, you can scroll here through breaks, for example. You can also use the search button here on top. And this is where you can link them. You can also link just out of our courses some modules. And to do this, I will show that now. Click on the courses tab. If you're in high school teacher, you to, uh, choose something from MLR, what means maintenance and light repair. If you're a college, uh, yeah, uh, teaching on a college, you will use the automobile service technology or the master automobile service technology. Let's do this first, the master one. And so what I'm basically opening is a book with chapters in there and like a separate uh, lessons and uh, pages in there. So those chapters are the way how we organize things in I like to it. And um, yeah, where you can find different things back here. So uh, for now, I will go into the engine repair subcourse. So I open up the book basically with the Master Automobile Service Technology book. See here all chapters in there with engine repair, automatic transmission, etc. So let's click on the engine repair. And then we have here all kind of smaller folders under here. You see how many modules there are for every folder. And let's link some uh, singular modules or assignments, right? So singular lessons or uh, out of the engine general theory by clicking on it. And then when you go down here, you see the singular lessons. Let's do piston engines. When I click here on piston engines, you see only start module and the word piston engines. So if you click on, um, on the word piston engines where what is uh, underlined this could be in your case uh, blue or green or whatever your school colors are in. in my case it's red when i click on there you see i'm switching uh, the tabs automatically to the modules tab you see here select as lti tool so you can click on there and automatically we have the deep link here so under here you want to say load in a new tab at item and we have our first uh, yeah singular lesson in here let's do another one here really quick plus then automatically uh, external tool elected tool deep linking is already selected let's click on there again you see uh, we we are where we uh, left off in elected I could click here on the courses and I can, um, in elective, we have something what we call breadcrumbs. They are here on the top of your screen. This is how we can uh, navigate and layer back. And we were in the subfolder or the subcourse MEST engine general theory. Let's click on there. 
and you're back here at the piston engine modules. Let's do also the piston engine quiz. Again, I click here on the module name, select this LTI tool, and see here, and it's selected. Make sure that we can load it in a new tab, add item, and we have two now. Let's publish those two um, modules here by using the publish button here, and they're now visible for your students. All right, so this was one way of doing it. Uh, we can uh, deep link singular lessons or quizzes or tests. The other way what, um, what we can do is like um, deep link a whole course or sub course. And to do this, I, I will give this example, example here under week two by clicking here on the plus. Again, the external tool is already selected. Click on the elect to tool deep linking. And we're back in the modules page in the piston engine quiz. Let's click here on the course tab here on the top. Let's navigate one layer back with using the breadcrumb here on the top. And now you see MASD engine general theory. I can go one layer back here to see how many modules everything has. So you see here, for example, the engine general theory has 22 modules. It takes four hours 44. So if I link a whole course, uh, the benefit of that is like you don't have to necessarily as a teacher have to do one course at uh, one module at a time linking. You use the system we already provided in Electrode. So the organization we offer in our system and you can use that like right away. You already paid for it, right? <laughs> So you can just use those sub courses if you want uh, from elected and uh, yeah, link the whole sub course. So you see here again, you see here the duration. So this gives you a good indicator how much work you can hand out every week uh, in my example to your students. Let's click here on that. I mean, I see engine general theory sub course. You see here all the modules again, includes the piston engine and piston engine quiz. And now I can select this as an LTI tool. Let's do that here. I'll load in a new tab, add item. Let's publish it, and there we go. So now we basically have um, two um, singular lessons or, and assi or assignments here in week one. And in week two, we, we linked or deep linked a, a folder and a course folder out of Electric. All right, so what we can do now is um, for you as a teacher, the grade book is gonna be the leading thing here in Canvas. So if we click on there, see if we only have uh, one folder here, what is linked, it's new assignments, and for the rest, we can't see anything here. When I go back to our menu bar, uh, we have also a folder, what is called assignments. And this is a, the tool where we can actually um, organize the grades in our gradebook. So some of our courses, uh, yeah, if you were like doing this for a year, that can be over 300 to 600 uh, modules you're deep linking. Uh, and MEST course has even 1200 modules. And that would be a lot of information in your gradebook. So there's a way how we can organize the organization, uh, sorry, the, the lessons or assignments in your gradebook. And we do that under the assignments tab here. First, I have to uh, get all my um, lessons or assignments into those assignments tab here because there's nothing in here yet. But to do that, a student can work through them or we as a teacher uh, can populate those. So we, we're basically um, going into uh, the system as a student with a student view to populate our assignments tab here. All right, to do this, you want to go to the modules tab. Click on the right top of your screen on the student view. And you see like uh, your screen uh, start, yeah, with the pink border around your screen, that means like you're in a student view. And let's click here on the piston engine.
and you see the module starts up, you don't have to go as a teacher fully through the whole module to populate your assignments. Uh, you can just use here the white go back button. So this is a little bit of a trick. I'm, uh, yeah, learn, um, yeah, learning you to uh, populate assignments uh, tab. So if you click here on the go back, it automatically writes to our elected system. And if I leave the student view here, you see under here, under the assignments tab, piston engines. And in the grade book, you will see also a column with piston engines and none of the students were through that yet. All right, let's populate a little bit more like in our assignments book so we can uh, set up our organization a little bit better. So let's do that by going back to the modules here, the modules tab. So let's go to our, here on the top of our screen to the student view. And then we're opening the folder. And you see now we have an whole overview of the course. And this can work a little bit faster if you like this way. So you click on, for example, we already did the pet piston engine. So I will do piston engines quiz now, start module and go back. Same for engine mechanical components, start module and use the white arrow to go back. When you click on that white arrow, um, again, the electric system is communicating with the campus system um, and the campus system sees it as, uh, as an assignment, what is uh, what they, what he has to put aside under the assignments tab. Let's do that a couple more times. And basically you can see here if it's dark blue and, and here you see it's light blue here under here, you know uh, when you already did, uh, when you already went through an, a lesson um, when it's dark blue, the light blues are the ones you still have to populate in um, in Canvas. It's quite straightforward. Um, it's just good to do this a couple of times. And um, yeah, I think it's pretty easy to get the hang of it. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, doesn't look like we have any questions so far. So if you want, you can also use your microphone. I'll do two more after this and then um, I'm gonna go back to the campus environment. All right, one more. And let's go. Let's get out of here. Leave student view. And let's first go to the grade book here. Here on the left side of your screen. You see now we have like a long list with a lot of lessons in here. So it's not really well organized and this list only gets longer. We only, um, yeah, uh, linked, deep linked uh, one sub course. So this gets a really long list and yeah, the overview is not as great as in the elected LMS. And to help you with that, this, we want to actually, uh, yeah, we want to organize it under assignments. And to do this, you want to click here on the top of your screen at the blue hamburger. So that's those three stripes here. And let's click on assignments and see everything automatically populated in our new assignments here. I created this folder or I renamed it to new assignments and this could have a little different name. But automatically it will be under assignments. All right, let's create another group here. And there's different ways how you can organize it. You can, uh, for example, lose, uh, use lessons, tests and quizzes. Or you can do it by subject. That's all up to you as a teacher, what your preferences are and how you want to grade the students. Um, I know like uh, 
quite a few teachers like to separate the lessons from the quizzes and from the tests so they can grade it differently in here. So let's do that. Um, I will give that an example right now. To organize it, you want to click here on plus group. Again, I'm under the assignment step here. Click here on plus group. First one for now, I will call lessons. Let's do another group. Quizzes. And let's do tests. Uh, let's do pre test. And post test. All right, you see under here, we have all those different kind of folders. Let's organize it now. And you can do that here by clicking and holding your mouse on that, uh, yeah, under this symbol with those, what is it? Eight dots, I think. You can grab it and drag it over to quizzes. And if you would have a pre and a post test, you can also do this uh, in the same manner. Often you have to use your scroll button on your mouse a little bit to get down. All right. So you see here that the lessons often have more points than the quizzes. Um, and it all depends on a uh, teacher wants this or not. Um, I will show you really quick how this looks like in the grade book now. So I will go back to grades. And you have still the long list, but on the end of the list, we have something it's called new assignments, lessons, quizzes, pretest, and post test. So those um, yeah, four categories, this um, yeah. Uh, calculates the average results of all the lessons, all the quizzes, all the pre-tests, pre all the post-tests. All right. So the next thing I want to show you is um, how to organize this better and how to give a different weight to everything. And to do this, uh, it's like to your lessons, like a weight, a score weight. So to do this, we want to go to the assignments here. We can give a different weight on the groups down below here, and we can also give a different weight to the singular lessons or assignments. But first, I want to show you how to give a different weight to the whole group. So uh, why would this be helpful uh, to you as a teacher to give a different weight to a group? It could be helpful if you, for example, um, the pretest, that's not something where a student really can prepare for. Um, because like this is like to see uh, what this knowledge already is about the subject and actually helps the student more uh, to go through, uh, yeah, to activate his thinking about the subjects. And the post test is of course after uh, he went through the whole course and that's actually more uh, leading, uh, yeah, great for a lot of teachers. All right, to give different kind of grades to those groups, uh, we can go here um, to the snowman, they call that here, with the three dots next to assignments. So that's here, the, the snowman. And if you cl click on there, you can assignment groups weights. So let's click on there. And you can say weight final grade based on assignment groups. So you want to check this here. The new assignments is basically what just came in. Uh, if, the, if you populate with something from Electric in your system, um, the lessons are the normal lesson module of the lessons in the Electric. Let's give this a 10% grade. 
And often teachers find the quizzes a little bit more important than our system uh, because the quiz is more the, the thing where a student has one shot for so he can actually improve the lesson, but he cannot improve the quiz unless you delete the results for the student. So let's make this a little bit heavier weight here. Pre-test, I will leave at 0%, and then we can do the post-test for 50%. This is just something I came up uh, with right now. So those 10, 40, and 50, if you'd like to do this differently, uh, this is all to you as a teacher. I'll, I'll leave that up to you, how you want to divide those scores. All right, let's say here, save. You see here we have the 0%, 10%, 40%, 0%, and 50% of the score. Any questions so far? Looks pretty quiet out there. Yeah. Well, um, no questions is good. They understand everything, so that's good. Hi. Hi, Bruce. Hi. Following along, it makes sense so far. Great. Awesome. No, yeah, okay. no, no. Good questions. We like to answer questions. It makes it seem more interesting. No, I, I as a teacher, I understand that concept. Okay. <laughs> Good. Like, like to know that they're awake. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bruce, for your feedback. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Letting you know I'm still here. <laughs> great, great. So the next thing I want to show you is basically um, how to um, how we can uh, change the, the weight of the singular uh, lessons or quizzes. Um, let's have a quick look here at our grade book, how that looks like right now. So you see here on the right side fully, you see here right, it says 10% of the grades, 40%, 0%, and 50%. So this indicates also like uh, how, much is, how, how much it all weights to their grade. All right, let's go back here to the assignment folder. And let's say um, you find the four stroke piston engine way more important than the two stroke piston engine. We can change like the weight of those grades. We can do that by clicking here behind the snowman. Let's say edit. See here, for example, uh, 50 points. Now I go to the two stroke engine, same thing, add it, I get 10 points. So that's a pretty easy way how you can do that. Uh, there's only one but here, and I will show you that now. Um, to show you that, I want to go first to um, the student view and I loaded uh, my student view or my student account in another browser so we don't get up mixed up. I'm switching browsers now. This part's real important, Bruce. So let's go into here in the course I set up and let's do a quiz here really quick. Um, let's see. As a student, you can go to modules. You see here, week one, week two. Let's do the piston engine quiz here, here really quick. I'll make a mistake here to show you how um, that for the score, how that can change. All right, exit quiz. Important to uh, show your students that they have to exit the quiz. Um, this student only got 60 out of 100%, so maybe you can encourage him maybe to redo it. Um, that's up to you as a teacher. Um, we say often between 60 and 70% is a passing grade, but that's, yeah, it's all up to you as a teacher uh, what you find, uh, yeah, important in this. All right, let's do one other one.
Got a good student here. <laughs> Make sure he, um, yeah, clicks on the exit quiz or in the case of a lesson, exit lesson. All right, well, 80%, that's a little bit better. All right, so I'm gonna leave here now the student view really quick and I'm gonna go back to the teacher's view. There we go. All right, let's look at the grade book, how it looks like here. I see here, when I go to the right, you see we have one engine mechanical uh, quiz what came in. He has 11 out of 14 points. And here he has six out of 10 points with a quiz. You can also see his average score now, 70.83% score. So this is his total right now because we don't have any pre-test and post-test. Um, so you see here, score does not include new assignments, pre-test and post-test because they have no points possible. That's because there are no points in here yet. We don't, we didn't load any lessons in there yet. All right, so let's click here on the hamburger again to see our menu here. Let's go to assignments. And we have our lessons here and our quizzes. And I let's, if I recalled, I was doing the engine block. Oh, wait, I forgot here. Oh, not a good teacher here. Let's click here on grades. We can always find it back at the grades, of course, what we did. We did engine mechanical quiz and piston engine quiz. Let's go back to assignments. Go down here, so engine mechanical. Let's say you find the engine mechanical quiz really important. Um, so let's give it more points here. Say edit, let's give it 30 points. Save, and let's say you don't find the piston engine quiz that important. Make five points out of this. And let's see how this looks like in our grade book. So let's go here to the right again. Suddenly you see here, student, the first student here has only 11 out of 30. But he used to have 11 out of 16 here. And he has six out of five. So his grade went down and six out of five is of course not possible. So what can you do here um, to change this? So to actually uh, make the grade work again, because I, I guess the student won't be that happy with it if you change it in this way. Um, so his grade went uh, drastic down, drastically down. So to change this, you want basically want to go in here in your own system as a teacher with the hamburger. You want to go to the modules. And you want to reopen those modules. David, if I recall, uh, do I need the student view for this or not? No, you do not. This is where you will go in. Um, so for when you when it's time to manage your um, students and grading, etc. This is when you will use the same tools that they use to launch to, to do their work to go in as an instructor and do this management. So this feature here allows you um, either give a student another attempt at a uh, course or, um, uh, or, or, I'm sorry, a, a module assignment, 
or um, a quiz or a test. And it also allows you to uh, reset the grade if you have changed the calculations in Canvas. It allows Canvas to recalculate that grade, that is. So go ahead and launch as an instructor. Uh, open in the new window just as the students would. Now you'll be seeing the course in the, um, or the assignment that you, or the tool that you created um, in the instructor view. So we'll have all of the various um, uh, modules that you added to your sub course or to your self-made course. And you will now need to launch that assignment that you wanted to adjust the grades to. Don't start the module. What you'll wanna do is go into the student view. Once you launch over here and you have the option, go to students. not the student view, but go to just view your students there. And then you will, um, nope, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I just corrected my language there. Um, and then you will now be able to locate that student. So let's click on this, the, yeah, that's the results for that particular student because being the only one that gave you a launch directly over to that, go ahead and click on the X there. This will remove that student's uh, student VS um, attempt. Go ahead and do that. And just to show what's going on, go ahead and delete that. Just to show what's going on, let's grab that tab on your browser tab and let's go back to uh, Canvas. Uh, all the way up there, yep, right there, and go to grades. And you can see that now that grade has been removed. Um, let's see. They were, they were doing the wrong one, engine mechanical. Let's go back into the tab there. Were we in the oh, wrong we one? The floor oh, jack. we're on floor jack. I'm sorry. Let's go back here. It's weird. Engine Let's mechanical. There. Engine mechanical. Go ahead and click into that. And you can see the student down there. You were, you were there. Uh, I think that we are. Uh, wait, hold on. I don't think we're there yet. Let's go back into engine mechanical. Click on the link there. See the student down below. No, nope, I think we, we went too far. Uh, click on the students tab. Uh, now you can click on, where are we? We're student V1. Let's go, let's navigate back from here. Let's go ahead and click on the, uh, the group over there on the left-hand nav. Uh, don't the group, nope, nope, nope. Down below the big black button. Oh yeah, right. Um, let's see. I think 101 here. Yep. There you go. There we go. Now yep. you can choose the student, choose his assignment, perhaps. Yeah, I think once you get you get into a you get lost here. I'm sorry. Uh, student VS. Go and click is, on. This is just. Yep. I'm there. We're right now in the loop. <laughs> okay. Go 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 back one. Go back one, and then let's go into the the assignment. Just hit the back button, I guess. There you go. Yeah. Now hit mass engine general theory. And then choose the uh, assignment. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yes. All right. Sorry for that, Bruce. Um, I will show you again how to do this. Um, so you go I've looked back like here. that a couple of times. I, I, I learned yeah, a lot right. of stuff that way. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> you do end up in a loop if you if you make one wrong turn. Sorry. Yep. Done, this, done that a couple of times and learned a little bit that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. They changed this two weeks ago, so that's why I asked uh, David as well here how this works. Uh, normally, we did this in other way, so it's also new for me. Um, so we're going back to the modules here, and, and this is in the teacher view. Click on modules. We're loading our, um, yeah, where the grade is in. So this, in this case, it's the MEST engine general theory folder. Click on there. Now we're going to the students. Go to students. Click on the group where you work in, in my case. Nope, you've got it right here over here on the right. Yeah. There you go. Find your engine theory. So you can click on uh, mechanical components here. You see it's completed by one. You see student VS, so you click on the student. And now I can use the X here to uh, delete this result.
and then um, it should be under deleted results, right, David? Now so click this. Yep. Yeah, click. Nope. Nope. Go back and just click the student's name now. Yeah. I hear. Um, student. Uh, VS. There you go. Yeah. And then and now there's archived attempts, and then you do the reload button or the restore button. There we go. And now it's uh, now it's communicated with the campus system again. So um, let's do this also with the other one. Uh, that was the so this is the engine mechanical component quiz, and we also have to do that for the piston one. You can go here, engine theory again, and then to the piston. Let's see, four-stroke piston engine. Here we go, piston engine quiz. Click on the student here, student VS. Delete. Now I want to click, click on, on that student again. There you go. Click on the restore button. Now we can just now navigate we over to the back time. in the system here. Yep. Let's see how this Going looks like. In our Great book now. Mm -hmm. Scroll on over to the right. There it is. There we go. So three out of five makes more sense than six out of Hello. five, right? And 23.57 uh, uh, out of 30 is also better. And you see here we have the average grade back again. Sorry for the, the loop, Bruce, that we had there. Um, so uh, yeah it is so new for us as well this they just changed that so uh, yeah sorry for that um hopefully i, I don't learned. feel so bad about getting getting myself in a loop now <laughs> no right right yeah exactly <laughs> yeah 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 you're, no you're helping me build confidence that way you did that on purpose we did yeah actually i wrote it out in the script and that's correct yeah <laughs> he caught us oh man <laughs> Trying yeah. to seem more human. <laughs> right. Yep. All the, right. The teacher always has a plan. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. We're all, we're always right. We're just testing you, Bruce. Are you? Uh, or we're yep. looking yep. at. Your... <laughs> if I'm paying attention. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's the worst worst excuse for a teacher. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's go back here to this assignments really quick um the next thing i want to show you here is like you can also say um just finished or unfinished so then it doesn't uh, yeah um contain your grade so let's say you uh, put a task in here or something you can also say just finished or unfinished uh, to do that you can go here again to the three dots here the snowman say edit say more options so this is the power diagram. You see down below here, display grade. You can choose from points. You can do percentage, complete, incomplete. Now, in case I will show you the complete, incomplete one. Save. It is published. Let's go back here to our grade book. And you see it should be, where is it? In the beginning. Where is it, David? Let's do that over here. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm typing a document here. Sorry about that. Um, no worries, what no are we looking for? No, um, I will do this over. Um, this is just to give uh, Bruce some confidence again. Let's go um, to the one he uh, finished. So there was a quiz. So let's go here to the, um, we had the piston engine. Quiz here. Say edit. More options. And then we can display grade as complete, incomplete. Is safe. 
in some cases they will um, make it so it's not added to the, the, the total score. Um, that's sometimes what some people do with the modules. Let's go to the grades. I there we go. Now it is um, completed. Yeah. So you see here as a uh, teacher only or it's completed or not. Yeah. And the student gets the grades either way or gets the points. Yeah. So it, the points will be um, in under the quizzes, the average points. Correct. All right, um, David, do you have anything to add? Um, not really. I'm attempting to write up a document for these steps as we speak. Um, the so. new steps, yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, uh, Bruce, do you have any questions for us? No, I think. Uh... You've given me enough here that I can go in there and poke around and figure it out a little better. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna have yeah. to work with it to, to get used to it. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, and that's the best practice. Just do it and try it a lot and see what works for you the, uh, the best. Um, yeah, it, it is quite a bit because you have to learn a little bit. I like the system and the campus system, but the nice thing about the campus system that you're students are already in that system and yeah so that that's a nice uh feature uh what you have there already yeah i uh i don't know since it's just bruce so i'm gonna highlight a couple of known issues that that may come into play down the road one of them that i just discovered is if you have your course is public and uh students are able to without closing the tab uh sign out of canvas um they would they will be able to launch these tools currently and the first one to do so if it will ask them their name they will put their name in and then anybody that launches while not logged into canvas um will do work under that one student's name uh that student will also be duplicated as the first time they, they came through there was a uh, name and uh, id created for them um the email should be obvious because it will be um something like uh user at electu.com um instead of the school email address um i'm working with canvas now to uh, and and our engineering team to prevent that another one is that when it comes time to copy a course currently you will need to uh not copy the electu assignments or remove them after copying them and then do that push again, recategorize and regrade, you know, normalize the grading scheme again. Uh, I have two cases open with Canvas regarding that. Um, they have taken full ownership of that issue, and uh, but I do not have a timeline on when they will get that fixed. Did you have any questions? No, no. I'm, I'm lucky. Yeah. I've got, uh, I've, you know, we're, we're slowly going in. I've still got the older class for one or two more terms so i've got a little bit of time yeah no that, that's really helpful uh, bruce yeah that you have some time to yeah. set it up and plan it out yeah you're you're on time <laughs> that's good yeah all right well thank you for attending our webinar and um yeah we hope to see you again if you have any questions um let david know or let me know um i'll put our email address again here on the screen and um, we'll send you uh, the recording of today, and then uh, the people who, the, the people who couldn't make it to the webinar will send another uh, more gene uh, generic uh, recording recording of uh, campus. All right, have a good day. You you too. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, David. Bye. All right. have, have a good day.